I will speak a little bit more about cinema um, in the 50s in Europe, uh, just because I was trained as a filmmaker from when I was 19 until I was really old, like 32. Imagine, I, you know, <laughs> I spent most of my adult life in the cinema, you know, to, to study you know, visual art, you know, filmmaking, narrative, anti-Hollywood, you know, learn from Moscow Film School, you know, all this cinema stuff. So now I see why I spent 13 years in the film school, just for this 30 minutes. Um, Anyway, so <laughs> I still need a paper to follow. Um, this is quite light paper, but uh, um, I did wrote some you know, very heavy manifesto some years ago. I somehow become the character of my novel. Uh, the characters in my novel always write manifestos, and they never publish. Um, but somehow that's my youth uh, habit. I wrote some manifesto um, uh, three years ago, and I read two about um, anti-mainstream narrative. Basically, you know, I put the idea of a Hollywood narrative as a poisoning machine, sleeping pill machine, which steal our reading habit and inject the, the, you know, the, the function of the Hollywood narrative, to inject that kind of narrative into the youth or into all of us, into my mother's head or you know, my uncle's head. So the way now they read the books or watch films is very much of that way of reading. So they often question like, why is your you know, story has no ending? It's like, what is ending? What's ending? Ending is death. Otherwise, we return to the beginning. You, know. you can't persuade a Calvino ending to a mass media consumer. Um, because I'm just saying that the variety of the reading and watch film, you know, consumer, let's say consumer narrative has been stolen. And there's one monophone way of narrative that dominate the market, even dominate our writing. Anyway, so that's the publishing house, you know, I think had power on us. This is very far away from me. Um, so my, my title is uh, long, called Nostalgia for Authors, Stop Being Wordsmiths, Be Avant-Garde Visionary. I think I'm going to start showing two film clips from 50s. Um, and one is from Jean-Luc Godard, Breathless. You, know, you all saw the film. And this is going to be just three seconds, three minutes of the, the beginning. And another one is Je le Jim by Truffaut in the 68. La jolie fille, le vilain garçon, le revolver, le gentil monsieur, la méchante femme. Scénario de François Truffaut. La mort, la petite américaine, le voleur d'auto, le concerto pour clarinette. La police. Supervision de Claude Chabrol. La pin-up. Le romancier. La boniche. Humphrey Bogart. Marseille. Mon ami Gabi. Picasso. Le photographe italien. Les anarchistes, le magnétophone. Un film de Jean-Luc Godard. La tendresse, l'aventure, le mensonge, l'amour, les Champs-Élysées, la peur. Avec Jean Sieberg et Jean-Paul Belmondo. Le diable au corps. Du rififi chez les hommes. Et Dieu créa la femme. Scarface. À bout de souffle. Le meilleur film actuel. Un événement cinématographique. Un sujet qu'on n'a encore jamais osé traiter à l'écran. Une femme peut-elle aimer également deux hommes C'est le thème du chef dœuvre de Henri-Pierre Rocher, le sujet du nouveau film de François Truffaut, le réalisateur des 400 coups. Qui c'est, Jules C'est moi. Et vous Jim. Jim et Jules, alors ben non, Jules et Jim <rire> Jules et Jim, deux hommes, deux amis, bouleversés par la même femme. 
vous êtes deux idiots. Un, deux, oh. Une femme généreuse et sincère, à la recherche d'un bonheur sans jalousie, sans mensonge, sans hypocrisie. Catherine n'est pas spécialement belle, ni intelligente, ni sincère, mais c'est une vraie femme. Et c'est cette femme que nous aimons. Cette femme, c'est Jeanne Moreau, la plus grande actrice française, qui vous fera rire et vous fera pleurer. On a été vraiment heureux tous les deux. Hein? Mais nous sommes heureux. Enfin, moi, je le suis. C'est vrai. Oui, on restera toujours ensemble, tous les deux. Comme des petits vieux, avec Sabine et les petits-enfants de Sabine. Garde-moi près de toi. Jeanne Moreau. Oscar Werner, Henri Serre, Marie Dubois, Vanna Urbino, Bassiac, La Petite Sabine. Un film tendre et cruel, inattendu comme la vie. Tu crois que Jim m'aime Oh, Julie. Moi aussi, je t'aime. Jim m'aimait là, épousez-la et, et laissez-moi la voir. On s'est connus, on s'est reconnus, on s'est perdu de vue, on s'est reperdu de vue, on s'est retrouvés, on s'est réchauffés, puis on s'est séparés. Chacun pour soi est reparti dans le tourbillon de la vie. Je l'ai revu un soir, aïe aïe aïe, ça fait déjà un femme bail, ça fait déjà un femme bail. Tous ceux qui ont vu Jules et Jim ont été bouleversés par la sincérité, l'originalité et la beauté du nouveau film de François Truffaut. is that one older lady watched this film in the 60s when the film released, a month later, this older lady wrote a letter to, to the director, uh, Truffaut, um, saying, I am, I am the casting in the film, and I am the one. Um, I didn't die, and I want to get in touch with the writer. What's his name? Um, John something, uh, Omero, uh, a very sad older man living in South France. And they did get, get in touch, and she is the, right, the lady from, you know, 60 years ago, that she was 80 something. Anyway, that's another little story. Um, so the paper is here. Um, Stop being wordsmiths, be a vanguard visionary. But actually, I did the investigation uh, yesterday. Actually, most of you write poetry, making visual arts, paint, doing theater, doing films. So I think it makes sense. <laughs> You're already doing it, yeah. Since when has being a novelist become a profession. Nowadays, an author only writes stories, occasionally does reviews, and teaches just to keep their mortgage repaid, but barely exercises his or her imagination in other art forms, such as theater, cinema, painting, sculpture, visual art, let alone going beyond the field of art. Novel making has become a retail business, in which novelists are wordsmiths. The decaying of face of art and literature manifests a more general phenomenon of our time. The rise of the specialist <coughs> and the routinized norm, which means explified by our modern day science professor, example, specialized in quantum mechanics who never ventures across his corridor to meet as a lecturer in cosmology, or oh, heaven forbid, trots down the road to chat to members of philosophy department, where, of course, the guy who does logic never talks to a guy who teaches metaphysics. The coach of art, science, and the letters have become an industrial system, where the idea is packaged and branded, where concerning the consumer's market niche, 
is paramount. Indeed, the girl itself, the field of literature has become a monoculture. Its main crop is a novel. I wonder if the competition between the writers and their wares has killed off the chance of developing their other potentialities. Have our authors grown too tired and weary to exercise their imaginations? Consider a high point in European culture when experiment run free. That moment is in the early 20th century when Dada movement caught hold of the Zegest. The Dada waded into the visual arts, literature, poetry, art manifestos, theater, and graphic, graphic design, and it generated a groundbreaking new cultural century. century. But we know Dada is 100 years ago, and things were rather different back then. My concern is more with our time, which is grounded in the post-Second World War scene. The 50s and the 60s were the period of the European auteur. This largely took place in France, Germany, Italy, across Europe to America, of course. It actually began in the, in the late 40s with the left bank intellectuals and the Nova Oman writers such as Alain Obergliet, Natalia Sahu, Margaret Duras, Sartre, Boris Vian, Jean Cocteau, who merged with Nova Vague cinema movement, centered on, the, on this film magazine called the Cahier du Cinema, with, with the cineastes such as Godard, Alain Henné, Eric Romer, Agnès Varda, Truford, Chris Marker, and again, Margaret Duras. The literature scene was dancing together with the cinema movement, and those writers were doing journalism, screenplays, novels, theaters, as well as making lots of films. For example, there was Chris Marker, known for his film La Jatie and the sans one of the most inspiring futuristic filmmakers and one of the most important film authors in the history. But he was a beautiful writer and a, and a great novelist and a journalist. And Duras, of course. Duras, although known for her best-selling novel, The Lover, but that's the most popular novel, she was a very important figure for French New Wave cinema. For example, her screenplay, Hiroshima Mon Amour. She also directed a few avant-garde films herself, including very beautiful India songs. And of course, there was Jean Cocteau, a true vanguard artist who began his practice 20 years ahead of everyone else. And his novel, Les Avant Terribles, was only a small little narrative work from his late period. But actually, way before that, he was a prolific, he was a prolific poet, illustrator, and a filmmaker. His films such as The Blood of a Poet, Beauty and the Beast, were significantly important for creating poetic cinema in Europe. In Italy, of course, Pier Paolo Pasolini was always a powerful and a restless poet, political journalist, as well as a filmmaker. In Russia, things were going much, much earlier. Vertov and Eisenstein were radical visual poets. In case you, you're not familiar, Vertov is a man who made a, uh, the man with movie camera. Um, so his visuals are crazy, you know, mechanical with, with, with camera, um, called the visual poets. And Eisenstein's, of course, Bato, Bato Shepard Potovkin. And Eisenstein has this um, idea, or had this idea, of making film adaptation of, uh, of Marx's Das Capital. And he never did. And when he died, he said, that's, that's my last wish. I have to make a film based on that book, Das Capital. And I was, when I was in the film school, I said, I will inherit that idea one day. Me, I will make it. Anyway, so that's, that's a Russian scene. Um, so they were, they were also great theorists, as well as cultural revolutionaries. And these artists exercise their multi-capacities beyond the mere simple storytelling. Um, storytelling is not their goal. It's only their little tool. Now, you may be very annoyed that I haven't mentioned any multi-talented artists um, from Anglo-Saxon scene. Well, yes. In old days, authors such as Bencho Russell, a philosopher, logician, mathematician, and a political activist were polymaths. For, so, so exa for example, Derek Jarman is a paradigm of the multimodal auteur. And in the current UK, Chris Petit, who writes novels as well as directs many avant-garde films, such as Radio Arm. And the, the collaboration between experimental filmmaker Andrew Cotton and Hackney writer Ian Sinclair 
has been creating a cult follower in, New in England. In Ireland, Neil Jordan is not only known for his film, Crying Game, but also for his very reflective novels and short story collections. And the last but not the least, of course, John Berger, first known for his essay, Ways of Seeing, is also a novelist, painter, translator, and important filmmaker. But still, in the current literature world, there are more Smiths than auteurs. Anti-intellectual air has been blowing since the 1980s. Very few visionary auteurs exercise their imagination in different media. Literature has become isolated from other art forms and has become complacent and conservative. Writers have become lazy, uncultured, and are not interested in other words. As a writer and a filmmaker myself, I am here calling this, hey, stop being wordsmiths, marshal your multi-talents, and be a vanguard visionary. I'm going to end this uh, with two other film clips. One is from Jean, Jean Cocteau, The Blood of Poet. And um, the last one, of course, you know, the beautiful one, Hiroshima Monomu. I mean, the whole film made by the writers. About like 15 writers participated in this film. OK. Déjà dangereux de s'essuyer aux meubles. Mais il n'est pas fou de réveiller les statues en sursaut après leur sommeil séculaire. Deuxième épisode. Les murs ont-ils des oreilles Je crois que c'est si simple de se débarrasser d'une blessure, de fermer la bouche d'une blessure. Ouvrez-moi Il te reste une ressource. Entrer dans la glace et s'y promener. Miroir serait bien de réfléchir un peu plus avant de renvoyer les images.
Regardez les statues. On risque. J'ai tout vu, tout. Tu as tout en bonté. Rien. De même que dans l'amour, cette illusion existe, cette illusion de pouvoir ne jamais oublier, de même j'ai eu l'illusion devant Hiroshima que jamais je n'oublierai. De même que dans l'amour. Écoute, je sais, je sais tout. Ça a continué. Rien, tu ne sais rien. Écoute-moi. Comme toi, moi aussi, j'ai essayé de lutter de toutes mes forces contre l'oubli. Comme toi, j'ai oublié. Pourquoi nier l'évidente nécessité de la mémoire Je te rencontre, je me souviens de toi. Qui es-tu Tu me tues, tu me fais du bien. Comment me serais-je douté que cette ville était faite à la taille de l'amour Comment me serais-je douté que tu étais fait à la taille de mon corps même Tu me plais. Je voudrais te revoir. À cette heure-ci Demain, je serai reparti pour la France. Où vas-tu en France À Nevers Non, à Paris. À Nevers, non, je ne vais plus jamais. Jamais Non. Hiroshima, sinon un film sur la paix. Tu étais pas sûr à trouver à Hiroshima. Comme toi. J'ai pensé à Nouvelle en France. J'ai pensé à toi. C'est là, il me semble l'avoir compris, que j'ai failli te perdre. Et que j'ai risqué ne jamais, jamais te connaître. C'est là, il me semble l'avoir compris que tu as dû commencer à être comme aujourd'hui tu es encore. Tu aurais eu froid dans cette cave à Nevers si on s'était aimé J'aurais eu froid. Quand tu es dans la cave, je suis mort. Tu es mort. Mon amour mort est un ennemi de la France. Oh, C'est horrible. Je commence à moins bien me souvenir de toi. Même des mains, je me souviens mal. De la douleur, je me souviens encore un peu. Ce soir Oui, ce soir, je m'en souviens. Mais un jour, je ne m'en souviendrai plus. Du tout. De rien. Ah, oh, que c'est bon d'être avec quelqu'un, quelquefois. Oui. Il faut éviter de penser à ces difficultés que présente le monde, quelquefois. Sans ça, il deviendrait tout à fait irrespirable. Oui. 
j'ai raconté notre histoire. Elle était, vois-tu, racontable. 14 ans que je n'avais pas retrouvé le goût d'un amour impossible. Je te rencontre. Je me souviens de toi. Cette ville était faite à la taille de l'amour. Je vais rester à Hiroshima. Avec lui. Chaque nuit. À Hiroshima. Du temps passera. Du temps seulement. Et du temps va venir. Du temps viendra où nous ne saurons plus du tout nommer ce qui nous unira. Le nom s'en effacera peu à peu de notre mémoire. Puis, il disparaîtra tout à fait. 